That's good. Good morning or afternoon or evening to everyone out there. My name is Mark Mullins. I'm with Fluke Networks, and I'm joined with some colleagues from uh, Silver Fox. We've got uh, Dominic. And Hi, guys. Alex. Hello. And we're going to take you through this integration of software with between Silver Fox and Fluke Networks. I guess a, uh, a quick um, point of reference. If you're having any trouble hearing me, everything should be working okay, but it's always great if in the chat window, you could send me a note and say, hey, I hear you fine. And if you get this message and you can't hear me, well, then I guess you can't send a message because you don't know. <laughs> me. But if anyone out there could just drop me a line and say, hey, this is working great. We can hear you. That would be just fine. I don't see any messages yet. In the meantime, to let you know, you are all muted so that there's no, uh, oh, okay. Someone raised their hand. Oh, there's a chat. And there's something in the chat there as well. Oh, is there something? Oh, yes. Okay. I can see someone can uh, hear us. It's it's a, a flute colleague, but I'm going to take that as as being as that it's working well. Cool. Um, the other thing, as I was mentioning, you're all muted. If you do want to send us a message or have a question, you can either use, there's a Q&A window and a chat window, and we're going to be watching those. We'll probably save most of the questions until the end, but if there's something that comes up, we might jump on it right away. So we'll let you know. This is also going to feature a live demonstration, and uh, that's always fraught with error. If uh, if you're the kind of person that likes to go to car races so you can watch the crashes, you might enjoy our attempts to do this live. Although we have done it before, we've even practiced a little bit, but we like to show our customers exactly how things will work when they take it out in the field. And uh, I remember a demonstration once I saw of somebody demonstrating a product and their hands were flying over the keyboard so fast and they were saying, oh, this is easy, this is easy. And they're going clack, 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 clack typing 150 words a minute, and I couldn't even tell what they are doing. Um, that's not what this demo will be like. We'll take you through it. We'll show you what it really looks like out in the field to create a project, download it into the Silver Fox software, generate the labels, and then generate the use those same identifiers in the tester, the Versive tester, to, um, to perform the tests and then generate the results at the end and make sure everything matches. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Should we go to the, can we go to the next slide? We can um, indeed, Mark, yes. Mark, just before we go any further, um, there's a couple of notes that the uh, chat window is disabled. Um, yep. So I don't know if you want to open that up or if you just want to have people. Uh, oh, thank you. Talk in the into the chat. I, I there was one note that Q and A was disabled, and one note that was chat was disabled. So uh, okay, just... I may not be able to disable the to re-enable the chat once the event starts. So maybe we'll just direct everyone to the uh, to the Q and A window if you have something to a question to ask. I'm not sure why they have both. So. Q&A should work fine. But thank you. Thanks, Caroline, for pointing that out. By the way, we also have Caroline Brown on here, who is um, one of our uh, marketing people based in uh, Florida. So we've got uh, we've got myself in uh, Seattle, Washington. We've got uh, Dominic and Alex coming from the UK and Caroline coming from Florida. So uh, much of the world covered. All right. I'm going to start this by giving a quick explanation of, of what is Linkware Live. What 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 is it? What do you do with it? Why should you care? So let's 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 unveil the first bullet. The thing that more people use Linkware Live for than anything else is the ability to upload test results directly from their job site, right out of their tester, to the cloud over Wi-Fi. You actually can also do it with a uh, with a if you can if you have an opportunity to connect to a wired network. Um, but that's not always possible. You can, of course, do it through your phone if your phone is a hotspot. And this gets rid of the problem of a tester getting lost or results being accidentally erased. You can upload the re results, say, you know, at, during a break or maybe at lunchtime or whatever. And that way you don't, you don't run the risk of losing results. And in many cases, we've had customers have a tester get stolen or they dropped it in the lake 
or something, and the value of the results in the tester are worth more than the tester. So with this, you can keep them uploaded. You do it all the time. And just to let you know, uh, you can see this behind me. As of last month, we've had almost 130 million results uploaded. So a lot of customers are using Linkware Live to do just that. What's the next bullet up there, Dom? You can configure the testers remotely, and I'm going to show that. Now, a lot of times, if you have a very simple project, you're just doing a few tests, setting it up in the tester is fine. We, we, we spend a lot of time and effort making the user interface inversive easy to use. But we also wanted to make it so that if you have a bigger job, maybe you're using multiple testers, or maybe you've got people that, yeah, you know what, I'd rather configure it myself rather than let my techs in the field do it. This way you can configure them remotely from your laptop and then download the results, once again, over Wi-Fi or a network into the tester, and then they can just pick the job out. We're gonna show you how that works in a little bit. Next bullet. You can also manage the testers. Linkware Live keeps track of all your testers. So every time they connect, we check the software version, the calibration status. If, a cal if the calibration is coming up soon, we'll give you a warning. We'll even tell you where they are being used. So you can keep track of those testers. They're expensive. You don't want to lose them. And you can now also update your software over Wi-Fi. So you don't have to bring them in when we come out with a new version of software. And here's a little pro tip. We have a new version of software coming out probably within the next four to six weeks with some, some cool new features, but we're not here to talk about that. But anyway, you can keep your testers up to date and make sure they're in Cal and not have any surprises by using Linkware Live. Next bullet. You can track the status of testing. So as the results are uploaded, as a, uh, as a user of Linkware Live, you can log in from your laptop or a tablet or a phone and see how many tests have been done. Are they being uploaded? Are they passing or failing? What do the margins look like? Are they using the right testing limits? And all of that. So as a project manager, you can keep an eye on what's going on. And especially in a big project where you've maybe got multiple techs and multiple testers, you'll be able to see what's going on there. And I think we got one more. Oh yeah. And this is, uh, this is kind of key to what we're going to talk about here. Linkware Live provides a single database in the cloud for identifiers, and that can then be used for your labels and all of your test results. So everything's all stored in one place and everything matches, which brings me, I think, to the next slide. So, so what are we going to talk about today? There's one specific challenge that we hear about from our contractors out there all the time, and that is that Let's hit the first one. <laughs> this, which are the IDs that in general, your customers or sometimes you create. So these are the IDs that I need on the cables and everywhere else. They need to match next what goes on the cables. So the actual labels that go on there. And then they also need to match your test reports at the end. And I we hear from contractors all the time that if they match, it doesn't have to be close. It has to be exact. So you notice here, you see some, there's uh, some, uh, well, full stops, as my friends in the UK would call them, or decimal points or periods and dashes mixed together. I've heard from so many contractors that said, yeah, when we, when we did the labeling, we did a dash where there was supposed to be a dot. And so we had to go back and redo them all, or the reports were all wrong, and we had to go back and redo those. Redoing the reports is pretty easy. Redoing all the labels is really time consuming. And this is the problem we want to solve with Linkware Live. So what's what's up next? Super. Tom, I think you're taking over. I'm taking over. Thank you very, very much, Mark. I'm just going to put up my stuff here. Um, so it should have gone to the next slide. Yes. OK. Yeah. Uh, right, right super. Ahead. Um, so just wanted to talk a bit about Silverfox for those of you who haven't heard of us before. Um, so we're a cable and equipment labeling manufacturer based in the UK, hence the accent, uh, about 20 minutes north of London um, for anyone who's been here before. We've been in operation since 1979, so 2024 is our 45th anniversary as a company. Alex and I haven't been here for the whole time, but we are exceptional. We, we do have an exceptionally knowledgeable team here uh, who are fully aware of cable and equipment labeling applications. You'll see there uh, underneath uh, a little Union Jack pointing towards a US flag. So all of our products are proudly manufactured in-house here in the UK and then shipped globally, uh, supporting customers all over the world, uh, including including the USA. So just a bit about our products and offerings. 
So we have one software, one printer and one ribbon. So you may or may not be aware of other labeling suppliers. Perhaps you have one that you use already, uh, but a unique feature of Silver Fox is that we only have one printer. This may seem strange uh, to some. However, we just have one printer that does over 160 plus variations of cable and equipment labels. So labels like wraparound self laminating, heat shrink wire markers, asset labels, patch panel labels, and so on. A whole range of labels printed with one solution as opposed to perhaps different labels with different printers. The printer in question is called our Fox in a Box. So it's uh, from a procurement perspective, it's easy because there's no questions about matching a label type uh, to a printer type. Similarly, from a user operation perspective, it's easy because it's the same software and same thermal transfer ribbon for every label type. So it means as the user's requirement change in the future, um, they don't need to procure a new solution. So for example, a user starting off with a wraparound self-laminating label, um, and then a requirement changes to asset labels or patch panel labels, it's, it's the same software, same printer, same ribbon. So super easy. An incredibly unique aspect of this fox in a box or this part of the solution is the ability to design and print a label for any patch panel from any OEM, copper and fiber, past, present and future, and then print the label there on site. So this is actually a new feature that we've rolled out this year. The days of a slower handheld label with a tape that doesn't quite fit the panel or, or flicks up in the corners after a, a few weeks or a few months are gone and a user can print a very durable label uh, for any panel in seconds. In fact, I was recently over in Dublin at a large data, uh, large scale data center there, um, and they use this patch panel, uh, this aspect of the solution, and the end customer at the data center was really, really impressed, uh, not only with the quality, but the uniformity of the labels across the whole project. So great feedback on that one. The speed of this solution is, is what makes it unique um, alongside the ability to design a label for any patch panel. Um, and a user can print labels for 41 new patch panels in under 30 seconds. So when you compare that to a speed of a handheld, especially considering that it's the exact size, it's pretty significant. Oh, and also uh, with this, it's available in adhesive and non-adhesive formats for those panels with, uh, with the label windows. Next up is testing. So one of our core four values here at Silver Fox alongside service, time saving and innovation is quality. So we work really, really hard to ensure that our labels are the most highly tested on the market. So for example, our Foxflow tie on cable labels, which are trusted all over the world from the US to Australia to South America, Middle East, Far East, used in really, really widespread projects on some pretty um, key customers. Uh, these are tested to 8,000 hours of accelerated UV which is the equivalent of about 12 to 15 years in continuous direct sunlight in a northern European climate, so somewhere like France. This 8,000 hours is twice the length of time of a similar label from a competitor, and even after this enormous amount of time, the test was non-destructive and uh, conducted by an independent testing house, so you can be sure of its results. Foxlow is also plenum tested and low smoke zero halogen. This label is perhaps less relevant in the system integration space, or perhaps for you guys in, 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 the, uh, in the webinar, um, and you would pro probably be using something like a wraparound self-laminating or a fiber optic flag label or a patch panel label. Nevertheless, it's a great example of the paces that we put our labels through to ensure that our users are let, not let down by quality. The next point is free of charge feature updates. So as we manufacture and develop our labeling software in-house here in the UK, it gives us great flexibility in terms of continuous improvement to the software to offer a more competitive and time-saving solution to all current and future users. All feedback requests and suggestions we get on the software, both good and bad, go straight to our software development team who then work on improving it. And the way it works is then new, these new features are then rolled out to all users completely free of charge at no extra development cost. In this respect, the investment is completely future-proofed uh, because a user doesn't need to go out and purchase a new printer every time a software improvement is made, they get it automatically. As a great example, uh, this Fluke Networks Linkware Live inter in integration will be uh, rolled out automatically at no extra cost to all existing users of the Fox in a Box, uh, despite the, the development cost that, that we've had on our side. It's all about future proofing. And truthfully, this is a massive pull for our customers. The fact that our software and printers are essentially never obsolete means uh, our customers stay with us for a very, very long time because they're always up to date. And then when you pair that with the free of charge support and training and lifetime support they receive, it's uh, it's a, it's a pretty good uh, product proposition. 
And then finally, uh, you would have seen on the title slide there on the uh, label flex side of things. So uh, uh, Silver Fox has actually been the label partner for Belden for 20 plus years. Um, so long before mine and Alex's time, uh, developing the label flex range of labels and label software for them. This Fluke integration will also be available in that software. So if you are labeling up Belden panels or cables, that solution could be right for you. Again, if you're an existing advanced or professional level user of the uh, label flex label software for Belden, uh, this new fleet feature will be rolled out to you completely free of charge. Oh, gone through it again. There you go. Uh, so at this point, you may be thinking, why the integration? Uh, why would Fluke Networks integrate with Silver Fox labeling all the way over here in the UK? Well, the first reason is to reduce the chance of error. Naturally, when two systems speak to each other and sync up and you lower the level of human interaction, you reduce the chance of human error and a reduction in human error um, makes for a more efficient install. The second reason for the integration is to increase time savings. Now, this sort of sprouts off the first point in reducing errors, but another value that Silverfox works towards is, is producing a time saving solution for the end user. This link between Silverfox labeling and Linkware Live can only save time for the user. Um, and my colleague Alex will show you just how powerful this time saving is when we get into the demo section. And then finally, as I mentioned in my previous slide, uh, an increase in functionality. Uh, we're always looking to improve our product offering to all users. This integration is just one of the many things that we're working on here at Silverfox. Still, the whole point of uh, this is to future-proof an investment for a user so that unlike most software, not just label software, but most software in general, with Silverfox, you pay once, whether today or 15 years ago, and you stay completely up to date with labeling technology. Like this uh, Fluke Networks Linkware Live integration, new variations of QR code, new methods of data input, and so on. All our users are fully up to date all the time, which, uh, which we think is, is pretty neat. Um, I'm going to throw it over to my colleague, Alex, now who's going to talk through some of the unique features of this particular integration with Linkware Live. Thanks, Tom. Uh, the first unique feature that we've we've introduced with this with this integration is the trim function. Um, this allows the user to shorten their IDs. This is particularly useful for patch panel labels uh, and keeping using the same uh, same source as your cable IDs, again, reducing human error. This actually came from a system integrator. Don mentioned earlier that we listened to our customers and we did exactly that with this. We showed them an earlier uh, version of this integration. They said, wouldn't it be great if, and we did it. The second function is the ability to filter by results. So for those of you who are familiar with Linkware Live, uh, your, your, once you test the cable, you get a pass or fail. Imagine if you come back to your uh, to print some more labels midway through testing, and you have no idea how far you've got to. With Silver Fox and Labacus Innovator, you can filter by untested, and then just print those ones and ignore the ones that already passed and presumably are already labeled. And the final one, again, is for bigger projects, allows you to select a range of, of, of IDs to print. So imagine you have can't do everything in one sitting. You then have the ability to come back later on and print from label 150 all the way to the end if you need, or to 200 if that's all you've got time to do. I know, I know it's difficult to visualize all this, but it will become clear when we get to do the demo in a bit. So for those of you that aren't familiar with the Linkware live process and the, the what we're going to do in the demo in a second uh, is Mark is going to go and create uh, a project in Linkware live, assign some tests to it and create some cable IDs. I'm then going to pull it down into Labacus Innovator uh, and then print some labels. We're going to imagine labeling some cables. And then Mark is going to test the cable on where he is in in uh, on the west coast of America, and upload those to Linkware Live, and then we'll all be able to see hopefully a report from that. And project managers can do that all over the world. Hopefully. 
<laughs> Super. Uh, thanks, Alex. Um, so we're going to we're going to jump into the demo now of, of of how that integration works. But but first, I wanted to to highlight a piece of feedback from uh, a, an existing user of the solution. Uh, unfortunately, I can't share the company's name, but there are large globally recognised system integrator working on on very very large data centre projects all over the world. This one was actually in 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 Europe. As you can see from the quotes there, they were able to cut down their labeling time from uh, a previous supplier one month uh, to three days uh, with Silver Fox. So, um, so not a bad return if you, if you, if you value your time. Um, okay, guys, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I think, Mark, you're going to share yours. If things go as planned, yes. If things go well. Okay. Let's, let's see how this works. Um, we, I have, it, I have done this before, but it's always uh, exciting to do it in front of a live audience. There we are. I think we're screen sharing. Seamless, perfect, Mark. You see my screen? It looks looks great. All good. So this is what Linkware Live looks like when you log in. Um, I've got a number of different projects over here. Um, most of them just kind of things I made up for the for entertainment purposes and testing and whatnot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project. And somewhere along here, I'll see, ah, there's the button for a new project, all right? So we decided we're going to call this, uh, what is it? It's it's Fox University, right? Yeah, that's the one. There we go. Okay, and we're going to make it active, uh, location. Uh, I don't know. Where, where, did you, where did you guys say? Salisbury? Salisbury, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and that's, uh, then we'll put in a start and an end date. This just allows you to be able to sort things. Maybe we'll start next week. And uh, we'll finish it up um, by the end of the next next week. So that's our project I created. So if it install creating a project is pretty easy. Now this project, I'm going to keep it pretty simple. It's going to be a uh, Cat Six A type media. So that's uh, that that's all pretty common. Configuration name. I'm just going to use the same thing there. And it's twisted pair. I want to test a the link. The cable I'm testing is CAT 6A. One of the things that customers always sometimes, well, always sometimes, so, uh, sometimes forget more often than they should is they don't make sure the test limit matches. Now, if you want, you could install 6A cable and test it to a CAT 5 standard, for example. Um, we'll let you do that. But you also, of course, have to pick whether you want a permanent link, a channel, MPTL, whatever. But in this case, it's going to be a permanent link. It'll be CAT 6A cable. I'm not going to pick any particular brand because they didn't pay me. No, wait, no, that's not the right. It's because um, this is not their webinar. So I won't pick a specific brand. We're just going to go with that. All right. So, okay, that's the project, um, the cable types I want to say. And now it says, hey, do you want to add some IDs? Like, uh, yes, I would, as a matter of fact. Now, in this case, I'm going to get the IDs from a spreadsheet. I think that's probably the most common way. With Linkware Live, I certainly can create them if I want, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to just go here. I think, where did I put them? <laughs> that's the hardest part is remembering where you put them, right? There they are, the Fluke Cable IDs that I got from my friends at, uh, at uh, Fox University. I'm going to open those up. Close that file. I hit Next. And I can create, I can actually import multiple files of IDs, especially if I have, let's say, copper and fiber on the same job or some permanent links, some MPTLs and all that. And here we are. There's all the links that uh, my buddy, my buddy Dom created for me. I've got them in, uh, I've got them in Linkware Live right now. Those look, those look right, Dom? Uh, they, yeah, they look, they look good enough to me. They look correct. Alex, they're, they're correct? Yeah, they look good. Cool. Okay, good. All right. So that's the, uh, so the, so we're now, we're all set up with that. And um, I think at this point, um, I'm going to hand it back to Dom or Alex. I can't remember which one of you is going to uh, actually. Alex is going uh, to do the integration. Get, yeah. this, get this information out of the cloud and, uh, and make some labels for me. Great. So let me just share my screen. Right. So today we're going to print some uh, wrap round self laminating labels, which is probably what would be you guys would use most for your for your installs. As you can see here, we've got 
laser and thermal ones, but today we've got the Fox in a Box with us. I don't know whether you can see it on the camera. No, not yet, Uh, I don't think. we're going to pick pick a size. So here we are. This is the label, what we call the label workshop, and we're going to import some Linkware live cable IDs. This is just pulling all the data down from Linkware Live. Great. Just... Look at that. So the first thing to make sure is the Linkware Live allows you to be part of multiple organizations, something that Mark didn't touch on earlier. Um, but if you're a contractor who works for multiple companies, you can have be part but be part of their organizations and still have one, one single account. But today yeah. we're part of Install Tech. And we are going to find the project that Mark's just created. And if we can't, we, we can search for it just here. There it is, Fox University with 192 cable IDs. So we're going to print. And I'm just going to show you some of the features that we uh, mentioned before. So filter, we can filter by um, by status so fail pass untested now this is a brand new cable set we have mark hasn't done any testing yet so we know they're all untested but we can still filter by them so untested we're just selecting all the untested ones we can also start at a cable id number so if we wanted if we'd already done uh all of the b's we could just have a look all right, I've done all of them. So I want to start at cable ID 25. And you can see there, it's changed the output to remove all the Bs and go there. The next thing I wanted to show you was trim text. As I mentioned, this is mainly used for patch panel stuff and we're printing cable labels. So I won't apply it here, but we can uh, filter out uh, a cable, uh, cable ID and just go for the port ID here, which is CO1 downwards. Uh, and that allows you to use a single source for both your cable and patch panel IDs. We'll cancel and that now. Alex, do you want to just explain why, why would someone, if they're printing up a patch panel, um, labels for a patch panel, sorry, um, why would someone be, want to trim the, the front or the, or the back of an ID? So that, there might be some extra information that you'd put on a cable, such as uh, it's going to floor two, room nine, uh, panel, uh, rack six, uh, which you'd have on a cable for identification purposes or in a cable tray or a cable run. Um, but once you're in front of the patch panel, you know all that information because you found it already. So you might trim off this 2A and the, mm. and the hyphen and just keep the port number Yeah. here. You know, um, I was just going to point out, we were speaking with uh, some customers who have large data centers and oftentimes their cable IDs are over 50 characters, and that mm. is certainly not going to fit on a patch panel. So right. you would yeah. want to trim, right? Yeah. So if you already know that you're in a, a rack room four, and that denomination means rack room four, then there's no point printing it onto a patch panel in there because look around and you're already there. Um, so that's why we, we did this trim function. Great. So we're just going to import that now. And there you go, that's imported. And if we close this window here, you'll be able to see all these cables here. So if I now print them, I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen so you guys can see. Uh, so I can pin Fox in a box. This, this might be the first webcast where we've had a uh, non-human has one of the panelists <laughs> and, and there, there they are, Fox in a box. So I'm going to press print. You should get a live. <laughs> there you go. Look at that. Printing perfectly, that's all. So, there you go. 
they say don't work with animals or children or printers um, or printers let's just sort that out a live support call there live we exactly so now we'll just print that again Easy as that. So it looks like it's printing fairly slowly there, actually, but that's just because of the stream. It actually it prints at 100 millimeters a second. Um, so uh, you can print, and obviously they're, they're four across, so you can print, print a significant amount in a very, very short time. Well, that's enough. <laughs> yeah, all of them. But you can see these labels are come perforated, and as Dom said, they're four across. So we've printed four in a mere second, in mere seconds even. And that's ready to go on Mark's cables. Oh, all right. Okay. Excellent. Oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta wake up and do. I gotta do my thing now, right? <laughs> yeah. Nap time's over. That out? I don't know if that's how it works out in the, in the construction industry. So, all right. So now uh, we've labeled them all. It's time. It's time to test. Uh, more, more importantly, it's time to share my screen too. I think, right? So let's uh, let's switch to that. Let's pull my screen up. And you notice I got something new on my screen here. Um, I've got my link we're live here, which we don't need anymore. But it's it's just covering up all of the pictures of my dogs and kids <laughs> on that side of the screen. And over here, you can see this is my uh, this is my Versive screen. So I got I've got a DSX five thousand sitting here. And I'm going to show you now how I will get all that same information down into my tester. And the basic it, it's really quite simple. Uh, maybe I'll show you how 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 this is done. I'll go to tools, and the first thing you have to do is connect on the network. And I am connected on the network here, so I'm on a, I'm on a guest network. That's fine. And then I have I have to sign in. And uh, I think I am signed in, so I think I'm just going to, rather than make you watch me type in a password, top secret password, um, I, won't, I won't drag you through all that. One of the things you can tell here up at the top uh, on my Versive screen is if you see the little Wi-Fi icon and this little icon here, this indicates I'm connected to Wi-Fi and I'm also connected to Linkware Live. So now I am ready to actually download those, uh, those label IDs and the test setups. So I click on sync. Oh, now I guess we're gonna make you're gonna make me do it anyway. Uh, one thing I can do here is I can cheat and do it with my keyboard on my computer to save a little time. As you notice, I have different organizations that uh, that I can be part of. So you know, Alex and Dom are on the same account as me, but you can actually have different accounts and then have different organizations so that what you can do is you can keep data separate from say one customer to another or one prime contractor to another, however you want to do it. Um, but install tech is the one that we've been working with. So that's our organization. We're going to go in there and, oh, so remember I told you that it, you can get your software updates this way? We're not <laughs> going to do this right now, but you can update the software in your Versive. I, I, I don't update mine. <laughs> because I, it's great to show people this feature. I, I probably will have to update it because I want some of those new features. But anyway, you can see I'm way behind. 6.7 version 6.11 is out there. But as I said, I like to be able to show. It's very easy. If I just hit yes, it would update my unit. And then we'd have to watch that for the next couple of minutes. So let's not do that now. Let's go get the projects. And much like uh, Dom showed you, the um you're going to see some different projects in here that were there and you can see there's fox university now when i download to the versive i don't have as much flexibility as they demonstrated with um with fox in a box because basically i want to get all the ids i need to get the entire id and i need all the setups and all that so i don't have near the flexibility that you might have when you're printing labels so i'm going to hit sync and it's going to sync and import the Fox University project into my tester. And it takes a couple seconds and it's okay. 
Now I need to actually change the project. I was on this Jensen project. So I go there, I go down here to hit change project. And one of the projects listed should be Fox University. Notice none have been tested, none have been exported. It does show me here that this came from the cloud. So it wasn't set up on the tester. And if I look down here, there's my imported IDs. I can look at them all and see them here if, you're, uh, if you wanna know. But now I'm ready to start testing. I got my test set up, it's a permanent link. There's my ID sets. And I'll go back to the project that says, do you wanna start with the first one at the beginning? You don't have to start with the first one. You can pick a different one to start at, but let's, well, for fun, let's just pick, uh, let's pick a B. Once again, we don't have that cool filtering stuff like you guys have. Maybe, <laughs> maybe in our next release, we'll have that. And I'm gonna go ahead, my tester's connected. I'm going to hit test. We're gonna test that permanent link. Let's see, hope it passes. Cross our fingers. Oh yes, we got a pass result. Okay. Now I'm just going to use the auto increment. It says the next ID will be 2AB08. I'm going to hit that. I'll test that one. We'll test just two. Don't need to make you sit through here and uh, observe these tests all morning long. Okay, my results are saved, and that's good. So let's let's go back now. I'll hit the home button and go back. So now let's say it's lunchtime. I've done you know a, a few hundred tests and I need to uh, sync before I go to lunch because the boss wants to know what's going on. And also he doesn't want me to lose these test results if I, you know, if I, if I drop it in the Fluke Park Lake out in the back there. So um, we're going to figure out which projects we want to sync. So it's talking to Linkware Live and saying, okay, what's up there? It says, okay, you wanna just sync Fox University? And I think that's great. We'll just sync that one. Let's do the sync. So now it's exporting the results, the complete results of, uh, of all the testing. And, oh, it's done. Okay. And by the way, you can see here on my Versive screen, I see two tests have been completed. And if I went to results, I could go see those results on my tester. And there they are. But also over here in Link or Live Land, I think I might need to refresh my screen and see what's going on with my results. Let's have a look. All right, now I picked some in the middle for uh, interesting reasons. Uh-oh. <laughs> Did I pick some that are way down in the, in the mud somewhere? Or am I still looking at IDs? Let's see. No, these are results, so let's see. You picked B. I the picked B's. B, that way down there. No, oh. I think it's on the first page. Should be on the first page. It does show that I'm 1% done with my testing. Hmm. Oh, first page. Okay, let's go back to that. Uh-oh, where did B go? B was at the top there, no? Oh, no. So it starts with 2B. I, actually, I do see I have some uh, searching ability here or filtering here. So we got, um, well, let's just see all the ones that pass. Oh, they are. Okay. I don't know why I couldn't find them. Um, but anyway, if I wanted to look at these results, I could just click on them. I can go see the uh, the, the basic results. And then near and cross out graphs are always fun to look at. So I can also go in and look at the detailed results. Uh, if you're really into it, you can look at, you know, which frequency, what was the, uh, the margin it passed by. Mm, nice margins. 7, 6.2. Yeah, that's pretty good stuff there. Worst margin measurements. So now I have all my results. And if I want to, oh boy, do I want to try and do this right now? Uh, I don't think I'm going to take the time to, well, I could, I could generate a report. Let's try that. Now it's going to tell me I'm going to get an email, but so that's all I have to do to create a report. Now, what many customers do is they just give the customer, their customer, so the contractor gives the customer access to this account and they can go in and just look at the results themselves and we don't have to download them or create a report or make a bunch of PDFs or anything like that. They can just go in here and look and see that they've all been uh, tested and everything's okay. Did I, did I get an email? I don't know. Oh, wait, it's in my Gmail account. Well, I'm not gonna drag you guys through all of that, but the report is there and it's ready to go. And if you notice, all the IDs match exactly what's in the labeler because 
the tech in the field didn't have to enter them into the tester. And uh, my friend back in the UK did not have to enter them into the printer. So we know they'll match perfectly. Have you got the 2AB07 label there, uh, Alex? <laughs> I'm going to make you dig through 192 until you find it. <laughs> anyway, that's that's it. That's 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 how easy it is to do this. And it as uh, as Dom mentioned, it's it's error free. You you get you get rid of that error. You don't have to go through and fix the test reports, or hopefully, even worse, replace all the labels. Yeah. So with that, Caroline, uh, um, do, we, do we have any questions? No new questions. No new questions? questions. Okay. Oh wait, I wait. I all right. Here's one. I think we've got is. I was kind of curious, Dom and Alex. What about the the printer, the labeling? Um, what technology does your printer use? Do you use both thermal and laser, or? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so we have uh, one software, our Labicus Innovator software, um, and then we have two sort of printer outlets. So the Fox in a Box is a thermal printer, um, which prints over 160 plus variations of cable and equipment label. But then uh, for some people, they, they don't want to, to procure a, a whole new printer and they've got a, a, a laser printer there in, in, on site that they can they can use to, uh, to print. So we offer um, many of our thermal range available in laser sheet format. So A4 sheet format that can run through any ordinary office laser printer. So it would give the user the ability to print up to 90 wraparound self-laminating labels in about three seconds. Okay. Yeah, I, your solution seems to be very fast. Yeah, we, so Mark, time saving is pretty pretty key for us. So, Mark, we do have another question. Um, it says, "Is the remote control functionality part of the product or for demonstration only?" So, I'm assuming the the customer is asking if the uh, remote control of our Versive platform um, is is available. And of course, the answer is yes. Uh, did you want to expand on how you were doing that? Um, the only thing I yeah I would expand a little bit on that is that there's two ways, well there's two ways to remotely view the display of your tester. The first one is through Linkware PC, which which lets you do that, but it doesn't let you control the tester. It just lets you see the display. The other thing that we've built into the product, if you're familiar with it, is a, it's a VNC, it's a Virtual Network Client, I believe is what that stands for, but VNC server in the tester. And so you can enable that. It's kind of a backdoor function, but it is fully supported. And if you search on our knowledge base for VNC, you can uh, figure out, learn how to do this. So it's, it's a little bit of a trick, but it, it's something we fully support. Um, and then what you need to do is on your PC, you need to load a VNC client. Um, there are dozens of them out there. I use one called Ultra VNC. That's what you see right here. On, on my what you saw on my screen, but any VNC client will work. And it's very nice because you can control almost everything in the tester that you can do uh, sitting in front of it and you can remotely control it. So yeah, that is a standard feature. I see um, there's another question. Yes, this one actually has multiple questions. If it's the same one you're looking at. Um, first of all, great presentation. Thank you guys. So good compliment there. I have a few questions. Um, so this is for the Silver Fox team. Do you do different sizes of wraparound tape labels? Uh, yes. Yeah, we do have multiple sizes of, of wraparound self-laminating labels in both the laser format and the thermal format. So the laser side going through the laser printer and the thermal going through the, the Fox in a box. Um, I, I think I'm sharing my screen, right? Um, everyone can yes. see that. Um, if if you have a specific size that, that you have a query on, our, our details are on the screen. So um, please do send the requirement to there and, and uh, um, we can we can work out the uh, most appropriate label size. Okay, and then can your software do a QR code specifically GS1? So Alex, it, that one. Yeah, so it does QR codes, not GS1 QR codes. Uh, in terms of GS1, uh, we've got data matrix codes and we're looking to build in uh, in future into uh, data, GS1 data matrix and uh, GS1 code 39, 128, etc. Uh, as as the demand increases for that. 
Okay. So what, what's really interesting about the software is that it automates the, the QR codes, barcodes, data matrix codes. So any reference that you put into the software, once you turn one of those references into a QR code, like one, two, three, ABC, um, going all the way up to ZZZ, it will do it automatically and then print them instantly. Uh, next question. How does your free training work? This would be really helpful for my team. Alex? Uh, so free training is... Uh, is available via Teams. Uh, all you've got to do is go onto our website, silverfox.co.uk, and uh, click on book a training session. You then get into the training team's calendar and you just pick a slot, really, and someone will be there for you. Okay. We also offer multiple ways of doing the training um, as well there. So um, we, we utilize something called uh, Team Viewer as well, where we can sort of dial into someone's PC and make sure they have the correct p permissions and, and show them how the job works there. Um, WhatsApp for business, if someone has a quick question and wants to send us a photo whilst that on sites, email, phone calls and so on. Okay. And um, I've not seen this before with just one printer. How easy is it to change between labels? Where can I read in information, uh, more information on this? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a unique feature. The one, the one printer that does this many uh, label variations um, and, and is this powerful. The Fluke integration only increases the, the power of, of, of the product. And obviously that's rolled out to everyone free of charge. Um, and um, um, how easy is it to change uh, between labels? It's, it, all of the labels come in the same size dispenser box that sit behind the printer. Um, and it's just a case of uh, lifting up the print head, uh, putting the new label box behind and then just pulling it through because it's the same software and same ribbon that, that would do all of them. Um, another question, does the software work for all patch panels? I use ComScope. I would imagine the answer is going to be yes on that. Yeah, uh, any patch panel from any OEM, um, past, present, future. Uh, you basically design the, your patch panel within the software yourself. So um, we were regularly getting customers um, say, I have a, um, a Comscope 1, 2, 3, 4 patch panel. I need a label for it. Um, and uh, actually, the person who knows the most about the size of the label required is that person at the coalface who is in front of the panel. So gifting the ability for someone to just measure up the labeling area on a patch panel um, and print a label there and then to a high standard that's the correct size, uh, strong adhesive that's de designed specifically for that application um, is a, it's a complete game changer. And that is one of the reasons that that data center, a Comscope data center actually in, um, in, in Europe, were able to cut their labeling time down from a month to three days. Excellent. Are the software updates for the printer automatic? Uh, Alex, you want to say that one? Uh, yes. So what happens when we release an update is much like Mark just showed on the Fluke tester. Um, you get a little notification a pop up saying there's an update. Would you like to uh, install it? You click yes. Uh, it installs, restart the software and off you go again. So yes, they are automatic. Okay. There's another question on training, but I think you uh, answered that one on the other one. Does it do the patch panel labels? The answer of obviously is yes on that. Yes. Yeah. Um, also, do you offer any labels for fiber optic flags? Yes, yes, we do in both uh, a thermal and a, and a laser format. So um, if you have a sort of single mode fiber that you need to um, uh, label up, we have fiber optic flags that would print it through the Fox in a box or through the um, or through a laser printer, and it will work the exact same way as the wraparound self laminating that Alex showed earlier on. Okay, and then how often do you do software updates with the free of charge updates? Is it yearly? Uh, Alex, how often no, do you do the so, updates? So the updates are uh, prob uh, probably every six months. We tend to do an update. Uh, either with features or bug fixes. Um, and it is, as we've already established, free. Um, and yet it normally happens about every six months. Okay. And then uh, last question. Currently, do we have to set up the printer for port spacing when we are printing patch panel labels or the spacing will be calibrated automatically? Um that's a good question. So what happens is, and uh, we can we can organise a demo 
a different on a different call i suppose um is you measure out the patch panels uh that are sat in front of you with a ruler or, or a, a tape measure and you there are certain parameters you have to measure and once you've inputted those everything is spaced and calibrated automatically Hmm. Okay, and another question just popped in. What is the lead time on your labels? Good question. Um, so everything is manufactured in-house here in the UK. Um, obviously, it's a long, long way uh, if you're in the US, uh, but uh, we use um, FedEx, who are very, very reliable, um, and normally get um, orders over to the US in about three days. We do also have um, a stock holding of many of our most popular off-the-shelf products in uh, Clearwater, Florida. Um, so for fast moving products like Fox in the Boxes uh, down in Florida, that you can you can order those and they'll be with you pretty quickly. Um, but even direct from from the UK, um, it's about three or four days. I have a question. Can you order these through uh, through distributors as well? Yes, yeah. So we've we've kept we we've kept our um, our distributors. Uh, references off this slide so that uh, right. it's completely agnostic um but um yes you, we we're available on the likes of annexter gray bar westco digikey newark um or if you have a um, a reseller that you like to purchase things through so a smaller a, a wholesaler near you then they're welcome to contact us and then we can supply via them if it's easier but then obviously there's the direct route as well okay good good so I think that uh, concludes our, our current questions. Uh, I'll hand it back to you, Mark, and the Silver Fox team. And you can uh, wrap us up. Yeah, I just wanted to say, well, thank you to the Silver Fox team. I think you, uh, you've got a very, a very interesting solution here that I think uh, would be very appealing to a lot of our customers. Um, and I thank you for taking the time to uh, present this to us. And I'd also like to thank uh, all of our customers who joined on the line to watch this. We appreciate that. And uh, we hope it proved useful for you. Um, and with that, I, th I think that's, that's all I've got to say, Dom. Yeah. Yeah, thank thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Mark and Caroline for for organising uh, this webinar. A great turnout from from everyone as well. Really appreciate uh, the questions as well. Lots of good questions there at the end. Um, there will be a recording of this as well, which I guess we'll publish in in, in the next couple of days uh, when when it's when it's clipped. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, we're we're excited for the integration to develop and grow and 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 further improve um, as as it's rolled out. Okay. Super. Brilliant. Brilliant. Unless there's any last questions, I think that's it. Okay. Well, thank you very much for everyone on the webcast. Uh, have a great day. And uh, we'll see you later, maybe when we have something else new to announce. <laughs> thank you, guys. Appreciate thank the you. time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.